But it didn't work. Some strange things began to happen. We would sit around the table at night to discuss what is the Bible and what's the salvation. My father has a Bible. It's called King James Version of the Bible. Most of you probably heard about it, especially any students of Abhimdidad or Zachary Nike you've heard about King James Version of the Bible. But I work out of a different one that I've had since 1953. It's called the Revised Standard Version. And it says in it, King James Version has grave mistakes, grave errors, defects in it. That's what it says. So I begin to preach out of mine, which doesn't match. Now my father said, no, it's this way. I said, no, it's this way. Now my wife comes up with her Bible from Jimmy Swagger. It's called The Good News for Modern Man. Okay? Totally different. It's written in modern vernacular. You can just, you know, say anything you want to with it. You don't even recognize the Bible anymore. The Catholic priest, he's got another Bible. An older Bible. With 73 books, we're working out of 66 books. And his is not even the same in the verses. It doesn't match up at all. And I never even knew about this subject until then. And he's saying this, and I'm saying that, my father's saying something else, my wife's on something else, and all the time, Muhammad the Muslim is sitting over there like this. So we ask him, I guess it was me asking him, I said, well, how many versions of your book, your Koran, do you have? He said, the Quran has no versions. There's only one. It's original. It's in the Arabic language. Zalikul kitabullah raybafi. This is the book that has no doubt. Hudul al Mutakin, it's guidance for those who have taqwa for Allah. As Sheikh Muhammad Jabali was just telling you about this shield or taqwa that you have to have between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only certain people are going to get the Huda, Hidayah, Dina, from this Quran. These people that have the taqwa. So when he's telling us that the Quran is one, I'm going, huh? And it's in the original language. We still have it. You know what I was thinking? He's lying. I was sure he was lying because he could see the problem we were having and he just sat back and made that up. But I don't know Arabic at that stage, so I don't know what to say. You know, maybe. I don't know. And he left it at that. He didn't try to preach. But it put a big doubt in my mind now about we got all these books. He's got one. And... No doubt in it. Mm. So another time, we had another discussion that came up. Now this time, I went to the other preacher who had the cross. And I was asking him, I want to be able to explain the Trinity. He said, you know the Trinity. I said, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And I know the Council of Nicaea when we had that. But I want to know the way to explain it so a human being can just understand it. I said, Okay. It's like an apple. Just take an apple. The apple has a shell around the outside, the, the skin. Inside is the meat. Inside of that is the seeds. Okay? Three things, one apple. That's the way. I start going back. I'm going to tell this Muslim about the Trinity. But on the way, I remember his arguing with me, his way of debating with me. I said, no, he's going to tear me apart. As soon as I say seeds, he's going to say there's more than one. So it could be seven or eight or nine or ten gods all rolled into one. No, no, no. It's got to be special. It doesn't work like that. Let me go back and try again. So I went back to him. I said, what if he says there's more than one seed in there? He said, okay. I said, and besides, it could have a worm running through it. Then that would make it go up another notch. What can I do about that? He said, okay, okay. Forget the apple. I said, okay. It's like the babe, the egg. Use the egg. The egg has a shell. Inside of the egg is the white. Inside of the white is the yellow. Three, one egg. That's it. That, that, that's good to go. Now I start going home again, and it hit me. Wait a minute. The egg could have a double yolk. God becomes four, just like that. Plus, it could be rotten. I'm not going to ask him again. So at the market one day, I saw a man, and I was talking to him, because I was listening to some things that Muhammad had told us about the belief in Islam, Allah is one. And so I was telling this guy, you know, i got some doubts about the Trinity. He said, you a preacher, you have doubts? I said, yeah, I, 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 it doesn't make any sense. 
It doesn't make any sense. How could three be one? He said, okay, okay, look. You see me? I'm one man. I said, yeah. See my wife? Yeah. It's one person. Yeah. See my son? Yeah. Three. One. One family. It's the family of God. Use that. I said, there you go. The family of God. You don't get very far on that one and you realize right away they could have another kid just like that. But worse, they could get a divorce. You want a God that can get a divorce? Huh? In Texas, if you get a divorce, your wife gets the car, cars, house, your retirement check, your 501, your Keo plan. She's going to get your computer and even your email. You've got nothing left. And I don't want a God that can have a worm in it. I don't want a God that can be rotten. And I don't want a God that can get a divorce. I want to explain this Trinity the right way. Sure enough, the subject came up, Trinity. There we are. Now, here's the priest trying to talk about the Trinity is like an apple. I'm going, you don't go there. And then he's an egg. Don't worry about it. The family of God, forget about it. I know what's going to happen. So we ask Muhammad, we say, okay, what do you say about God? What do you think he said? A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim bismillahi rahman rahim Qul hu Allahu ahad Allahu samad Lam yalid Wa lam yulad Wa lam yakulhu kufu wa nahad And he explained it something like this. Say he is Allah, the unique, not like anything else. He's eternally sought after by his whole creation, but, but he doesn't need the creation. He's not the father of anything. He's not the son of anything. He's not like anything. And he is unique. I had. I said, boy, that's exactly what I already think, but I can't admit that. That sounds too easy. Uh. But plus in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to tell the Christians, don't say three. Here's a little point. I'm going to go out of the story for a minute to show you something. Nowhere in the Old Testament, the Torah, or the Zabur, the Psalms, or the Injil, which is the New Testament, nowhere in the Bible do you find the word Trinity. Not once. Not once is the word Trinity. But it's in the Quran. We have it in the Quran. It says, Thalath, tell them not to say Trinity. Oh. But they don't have it, and Allah said, don't say it. Guess what else? The word Bible is not in the Bible. Bible is from Greek. It means biblios or book. Book. But it's in the Quran many times. Is it? Kitab. Book. Ahl kitab. People of the book. So we found in the Bible a shortage. They're talking about it, but the Quran is explaining it. I found, actually, in the Qur'an, I can explain the Bible much better because it gives me the things I didn't know how to explain. So then in my mind, look what I did. I started realizing what he was saying was true, but I never admitted it. Instead, I was taking this and mixing it. And when I would go give my next talk, I would say, so and so and so, and I would use what I learned from the Qur'an to explain what's in the Bible. Some of the people liked it, but some of them didn't. Because when I began to talk about salvation being based on what? And the Bible tells you in there, there's no Savior except God. It says it real clear. Jesus is not your Savior. God is. <gasps> when I found that, I said, okay, let me try another way to explain that. Each thing as I would learn it, I'm trying to change how I'm presenting the thing. It still doesn't dawn on me I need to do something. But I could see for sure God is only one, and that, so I totally forget the Trinity thing. My dad never did believe it anyway, so he had no problem with it. Now we come to some new thing. The priest asks the Muslim, can I go to your church with you, the mosque? He said, sure, come on. Well, he went, and they came back. So he took the priest aside, come here, come here. What do they do? What do they do in there? Well, tell us, what do they do? Do they, like, kill some animals, or what do they do in there? 